What is up, YouTube? This is Matt McAdam, your truck editor here at Driving Line. I'm out here right now in the Mojave Desert, and uh, I'm starting a new adventure this week. Uh, I'm gonna be heading up to Moab, Utah here very soon. I'm on my way. Now behind me here is a vehicle I'm gonna be taking up to Moab. I'm gonna be camping out of it for the next week. And I'm also gonna do a little bit of wheeling while I'm out there, as well as uh, a little bit of wheeling on the way back in Death Valley. Uh, the vehicle itself is really cool. Uh, we got it from Four Wheel Campers, which is a pop-up camper company that's been around since 1972. You guys have probably seen them around. They make some of the best campers you can buy for a truck, especially if you're gonna go off-roading with it. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about this camper. Uh, I'll show you the outside now, but once we get to our destination tonight, I'll really go through it and show you guys all the things that this camper has, what it does, and how it makes it different from all the other truck campers that are out there. Earlier this week, I actually took a flight up to Sacramento and uh, took about an eight minute Uber from the airport and got over to Four Wheel Campers, which is their headquarters and where they actually build these things and uh, picked up this really, really cool truck that's got this camper on it. Uh, this is a Four Wheel Campers Hawk model. Um, these guys are the best in the business when it comes to building off-road campers for your truck. It's got a full aluminum frame. Everything is built in-house in the US. There's a lot of really cool aspects to how they put these things together and how they uh, actually differ, differ from some of the other campers that are out there definitely isn't your normal truck camper. These things are built to go off-road. They're very, very stout. They can take all the vibrations, the bumps, all the bruises from off-roading a truck. They're just built for it. You'll see what I mean when I go through some of the way that they're built. I've owned pop-up campers before, but nothing like this. This is one of the most amazing pop-up campers I've ever seen. If you guys have a truck that you're gonna take off-road a lot, you wanna go do some overlanding, you wanna do some camping, whatever it may be, this is the camper that you want to buy. It's got a full aluminum frame, so no wood panels, none of that stuff that can get wet and screwed up. It's all aluminum. The interior, everything, all of it's built in-house up in Sacramento. There simply is not another camper like this out there. So once we get to our campsite for the night, I'm going to show you guys a little bit more details of the ins and outs of this camper and how it's really, really different from the other campers you find out there. I'll give you guys a little tour of all the features, all the things that it comes with, some of the options you can get. Some people might think, oh, there's a lot of setup involved with these, but I'm gonna show you just how easily you can set one of these campers up once you get to your campsite. For now, we got a lot of miles to cover, so let's get going. Some of you guys might know exactly where I am just by looking around me here. Uh, if you don't know where I am, I'm in a beautiful backcountry area of the Eastern Sierras here in California called Alabama Hills. It's a really popular area, uh, actually growing more in popularity nowadays uh, for people who want to get away and just come out here and camp for a weekend and take some cool photos and you know really just enjoy the Eastern Sierras and what it has to offer. Before we get to doing a little bit of exploring around Alabama Hills, I want to show you guys what it takes to actually pop up this camper. So one of the first things you want to do before anything is make sure that you're parked on level ground. The next thing you want to do is undo some of the clips. There's six of them, two on the back, two on the side, and two on the front. So basically you just pull these down, undo that, and do the same thing over here. Okay, so now that the top is actually uh, released, go ahead, you can go inside. When you open this door, it's got a latch right here. It pops right into the door itself and it keeps it from moving really nice. Otherwise, this thing is just gonna drive you nuts closing on you all night. Now, four wheel campers gave me a step here and it comes in handy with a truck this tall. Some of you guys with the lower truck don't need it, but this truck definitely needs a step to get into it. It's probably about, oh, 35 inches high. Now we're just gonna hop right into this thing. Uh, I'm 6'2", so it's a little bit tough for me to crouch in here for a second, but it's not too bad because we're not in here for too long. There is a little latch here that you wanna undo. So you just push this guy up 
slide that out of the way. And then what you can do is actually push up on the entire roof all together and it will start to move. Some people prefer to use their head. I prefer to use my hands, but it's super easy. Comes right up. And once you get to about here, there's a little strap that you loop around this knob, push it all the way open, and then click the button shut. So the back is a little bit different, but mostly the same principle. You just gotta push up on the roof. And of course the struts on the outside are gonna help you push. Then you grab this board right here. You just push that out towards the front of the camper and pop that into place. Then once again, this strap here, button that up. All right, well now that you got your top opened up, you might wanna get a little bit of air in here just to air it out. Really easy to use these windows. There's two layers to them, they're Velcro. First layer here is just to let some light in. Second layer takes the clear panel off and then you get some air flowing through here, through the screen here. And you do the same thing with this side. And now you got yourself a nice cross breeze coming through here. There's also two vents in the ceiling here. There's one that has a fan up front or in the back of the camper. And the one above your head over there, which uh, just is a vent itself. Well, now that you got your camper all popped up, um, super easy and fast, got the windows down, got some airflow going in here. I'm gonna show you some of the features that are inside this thing. First thing I'm gonna show you guys is uh, the bed area. So this is the sleeping platform up here. It's got a mattress on it. Um, it's really comfortable actually. But if you're sleeping with more than one person in here, up top, it makes it really nice. They actually slide this guy out and it will go all the way to basically this cabinet here. And that almost doubles your uh, your sleeping space. And you push these cushions back over there to fill that void, and then you can lay out your bedding and then sleep just like that. Super convenient, super uh, easy to set up, and uh, very, very comfortable. Uh, this table over here for the dinette is really cool too. It actually swivels. It's not stuck in one spot, so you can you know, have a little bit more leg room here to work on whatever you're working on. Um, obviously, the other way around works as well. Uh, you can actually swing this guy way out to here. Let's say you're doing some cooking and need some extra counter space. That makes it really easy to transition from the kitchen over here and just get whatever you need. This table also pops out. So you just undo this guy. You can lift this whole thing out of there if you need the extra space. Or if you want to have someone sleep here, the same rule applies. These will actually fold and meet here as a sleeping platform. Underneath this seat, you got some area for storage here. I have a tarp and a first aid kit and a few other things in there. There's also some of the um, the electrical system panels in here. Uh, so those are easy to get to if you ever need to troubleshoot anything. The water line here for the tank also runs through there. And then uh, you have some more lines going through here as well. Um, I'm gonna move this out of the way and show you guys the little compartment that goes to the bed of the truck where it's hard to see from here, but this is where your turnbuckle is. It's mounted to this plate here on the bottom and it's real tight, but if you do need to tighten these up, that's how you reach it back here. That's the front turnbuckle right there. And this is a little bit larger storage area here. I've got some of my cleaning supplies, some paper towels, napkins, tissues, things of that sort. But as you can see, tons of space for whatever you would need in here. And then same thing applies here. That's how you reach your turnbuckle down there. There is another compartment back here. And some more storage right there. Really easy to get to. Over here, you got two more storage units up here, storage cabinets. There's one right here with a mirror there. And here's another one that's a little bit deeper. I've been kind of just putting clothes in there. Um, over here, you've got some more storage for food. That actually goes deep down in there. And then the same for this one down here. Of course, you have a isotherm refrigerator with a latch on here so it doesn't fly open while you're driving around. And it's a really good size fridge. It's got a little ice box in there too. And it's got a dial so you can set it to whatever temperature you'd like. Below here, 
You have another set of storage here. This is where I keep some of the hoses and electrical cables and some of the extension cords that you use when you're hooking up to shore power. As you can see, Four Wheel Campers has done a fantastic job really at organizing their interior to maximize functionality. It also looks really nice. It's uh, It looks like a brand new RV in here. So they've done a really good job at balancing function and form um, as well as making sure that everything is a smooth operation. It's not a difficult task to get anything done in here. So they've done a really, really good job at that. Up here, you've got LED bars that are touch. There's one on this side here. I have it dimmed. Yes, they have dimmers on them. And then one above your head for where you're sleeping. Come in handy if you're reading a book or if you just have everything on and you're uh, hanging out in here. Let's say the weather's not that great outside. The last thing in here, I wanna show you guys uh, everything on this cabinet here on the left side of the bed. Um, this is where your, your uh, kitchen is more or less where you're gonna be cooking or you're gonna be cutting up vegetables, whatever you wanna do. Um, over here you have a Dometic sink. Very nice, very sleek. Um, it looks great. You have a swivel uh, faucet here with hot and cold water to tur turn that on. Down here, you got your four wheel campers uh, water pump switch here. There's your panel. You have a few buttons here that'll tell you how much water you have left. It's telling me I have two thirds of a tank. I've been using this camper for about eight days. I've taken two showers with it and I still have two thirds of a tank left. Uh, so it's pretty awesome that, you know, you can hold that much water the battery shows it's full as well, so that's good. Over here you have an electrical panel for like a USB, if you wanna charge your phone. Um, these outlets here will work if you're hooked up to shore power or if you have a generator going. So really handy if you have to charge the laptop. This right here is your heater control panel. Uh, basically all the way over here is off. You can move that up and as soon as you do, you can feel the furnace start to warm up. The furnace over here, has a swivel on it so you can direct the air in which direction you want it to go. Really handy. I'm gonna shut that off for right now. Here's your water heater switch. So you can turn that on, start getting your water heater going. Over here you've got a, a voltmeter and it also tells you some of the other things that uh, are going on with the battery. You can get voltage, amperage, the amount of draw, things like that. I usually just leave it on voltage. It's at about 13.4 right now, which is perfect. Uh, there are solar panels on the roof of this thing that are on right now and they're pulling in energy. So that's what's keeping these uh, this battery topped off. So it's really nice. Now we have the water pump on. Plenty of pressure for whatever you need to do. It's got this, uh, right next to it, you have, again, a Dometic matching two burner stove, which is uh, really handy if you wanna cook some food in here. Uh, it runs on propane gas. There are two 10 pound bottles outside, which uh, I'll show you guys in a moment when I get out there um, that run this as well as the furnace. Down here is where your battery is located. Batteries, I should say. So if you have to make any adjustments there, check on anything, they're right there. Strapped in nice and tight, they don't move. Well, that about wraps things up in here, um, but I wanna show you guys some of the stuff on the outside, how the utilities work and all that. So we'll move out there to do that. Moving around to this side here, we got our shower hooked up. Super easy. This hose just kind of pops into place. Just like that. Turn it to hot, cold, whatever you want. And then you have a shower. So that's really, really useful. I have a small shower tent that I bring with me. Um, and that's what I just set up right here next to the uh, truck and then I have the hose going into the top and it's a really easy way to take a shower outside. So right here is your uh, gray water dump. Uh, basically, if you have just sink water, you can either let it run down the truck or there's actually a hose you can connect here to go to uh, sewer drain or whatever you need. Um, I just had water in there, so I'm just letting it go here on the ground. It's not that, no, no dirty dishes or anything. I wasn't cleaning anything there. So no harm, no foul, it's just some water on the ground. Up here, you got your power connection. You plug in your shore power or your generator. Right here is your hot water heater. Uh, up here is where you fill your water tank. So you open this guy up, 
stick your hose in there, fill it up. These are the side LED lights I was talking about earlier. And here you have your two 10 gallon propane tanks. So right now I have them only on one. This one still hasn't ran out after eight nights of using the heater and the uh, stove top. So you have the extra backup one just in case, but I haven't needed to use it. So pretty cool. And here's your refrigerator panel. Same as up here. That's where your fan is for the fridge. More lights out here. So I just want to say that, you know, four wheel campers, you guys really knocked it out of the park with these campers you guys are building. Uh, this is my first time actually staying in one of your campers. Um, and I gotta say, it's, it's the closest setup to perfect as you can get uh, for me when it comes to uh, camping. And for someone like me who spends most of his free time uh, off the grid in the middle of nowhere camping or off-roading, uh, this setup is really, really ideal um, just because when you're looking for the perfect camping setup, what you want is something that's lightweight and nimble, something that you can move around with. Uh, for me, tow capability is big. Uh, being able to tow my Jeep or truck behind it would be the best way to, to go off-roading because sometimes the tow rig doesn't do so well out there. But you can go off-roading if you have a rig like this. Uh, for me, I tend to just have more of a stockish tow rig and tow the toy that I want behind it. Now, with one of these campers, you can do that. You can actually put a trailer behind it and tow whatever toy you got out to the desert or to wherever you want to go. Um, and then the third most important part of it is that it's really functional. There's nothing that's excess. Everything is kind of just, it's its perfect for what it is. It, it does its job very well. It's very easy to use, easy to maintain, easy to clean. These are some of the things that the long-term uh, RV owner or truck camper owner really wants to hear and wants to see. And uh, Four Wheel Campers did a really fantastic job uh, at listening to the needs of these uh, kinds of enthusiasts and really addressing them and implementing them into their product. It's actually a lot of fun to uh, stay in one of these things because everyone kind of comes up to you and goes, whoa, what is that thing? Where did you get that? Hey, do you sell this? Did you guys rent this? Like. You get all kinds of questions from all kinds of people who are really interested in what this thing is. I don't think anybody can leave this place without at least getting a photo with Mount Whitney, which is back there somewhere. I'm just gonna arbitrarily point behind me and hope I get it right. But, <laughs> but for right now, I'm gonna collapse this camper back up. I'm gonna hop in the truck and just go do a little driving around here and then, uh, then head on back home. And I will see you guys next week. Take it easy. Desert Chief out.